What is up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Wes Bjornsson here, representing Country Crush. Welcome to the group where we talk about arm wrestling, powerlifting, and strongman. Let's get into it. What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about a subject that nobody in arm wrestling likes to talk about. And that is the inevitable pain and gut-wrenching torment you will feel uh, when you fucking lose. Hey, Joey! <laughs> but there is a, a good side to losing, and that is that you can learn a lot. I think you learn more losing than you do winning. And I don't mean in that theoretical, like, Oh, you really learned something when you lost from this guy. I mean, if you go back and watch the video, you can literally learn what to fix. And I'm gonna show you guys an example of that. Uh, just this last week, I took a pretty eye-opening ass whooping. And on the same day, um, a few of my friends took an equally embarrassing ass whooping. So we're gonna talk about their losses too. But primarily mine, because um, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did wrong, exactly what happened play by play, and how it's going to teach me to be a better arm wrestler in the future. So without too much more bullshit, let's break into that. Okay guys, so I need to introduce um, this guy. His name is Ron Sparks. Uh, apparently he's brand new in arm wrestling. I'd never pulled him before. Generally speaking, um, in the state of Kentucky where I live, I'm kind of one of the better left-handed pullers. So, admittedly, I have gotten a little lazy uh, in technique. I'm used to just <laughs> and bowling through people. Ron Sparks uh, was just naturally way too fucking strong for that. So, as you're going to see in this match right here, uh, this is my first time facing Ron Sparks. Um, you're going to see that the bowling did not happen the way I thought it would. Okay, let's go ahead and watch that. Uh, you're seeing us getting getting ready. Uh, he smacks our hands, which is ridiculous. Um, I'm looking over at the guy at this point. There's no audio, but I'm looking over and like just just say go, man. Just let us let us do it. And I could feel Ron's got way too much back pressure. So what did I do? I shot straight back like a fucking idiot. Terrible move. Okay, so that led us into me fighting him a second time. Uh. I, so, I knew I couldn't, I didn't have enough back pressure. He pulled my bi bicep straight open. My thoughts were, let's try a little less back pressure, and let's go to the side and see if we can climb on top. Then I felt his hand in this setup. Let me go ahead and turn it on. I felt his hand advantage in this setup, and realized right here that was not going to happen. I can feel his hand is stronger than mine. I am a hand arm wrestler. If I can't get hand dominance on you, I probably don't have a good shot of winning. Uh, so even though I look calm, I'm panicking. And that was my big mistake. Um, my thinking was, well, if he's got my hand beat, he's got my top roll beat, there's nothing I can do. He's just going to win. So um, I basically just tried to side pressure through him. I gave away my hand. His side pressure is stronger than mine. His hand is stronger than mine. And that's why it looks like this. Boom, straight down. Okay, so what I should have done um, is I should have pressed the guy from the start. He's loading with pure side. I should have went really deep inside, really got in there behind my shoulder, and maybe even, maybe even gave a little wrist away so that I can get more shoulder into the game. But I was panicking. Um, I freaked out. And it led to me making some pretty rookie mistakes, as you just saw. What I've learned from that, and I mean literally, not in the sense that we talked about earlier, where people are just patting you on the back and you can win a lot, you can learn a lot from losing. No, I have literally learned from watching this video, I need to get my bicep stronger. My bicep connection is the weak part of my chain. I'm beating people with my hand, not with my arm. And beating people with your hand is only sustainable for so long. Once you're at a really high level, um, everybody's hand starts to get pretty close 
you're not going to bowl through their fucking hands anymore. So, need to strengthen my bicep. Need to work on being calm. Need to be more analytical and stop, when I'm nervous, stop falling back into the same old patterns that have won before because they may not win this time. I feel like I could have beaten Ron Sparks if I had just switched styles, but I didn't. And that's what led me to silver medal. Not that silver medal's bad. Second place is good sometimes because it, um, it's good to stay humble. The second place still hurts. <laughs> second place is first loser. So that sucks. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Jonathan Lava and Joe Tidwell. Tidwell pulled it out, man. And Jonathan Lava is a great sport. He's a really cool guy. He's talked this whole week like so much shit. It's ridiculous. Joey! So I'm sitting here at work taking a dump, and I'm saying to myself, damn, this shit is actually tougher than fucking Joey Tidwell. Ugh. I mean, you're like, you're like as bad as Tom Nelson's fucking jerry curl he's got nowadays. Ugh, you're weaker than a fucking AIDS patient. I mean, your bicep is as weak as Mike Aiello's pickup lines. Oh. Oh, your top roll is probably as bad as Tim Bresnan in a fucking spelling bee contest. Oh. Oh. I'm not to mention how fucking ugly you are. Oh my god. Raymond Cote is better than looking at you. Ah. Saturday. Two days, bitch. Uh, but on the on game day, it was all respect. Uh, regardless of who won, there would have been there would have been respect after that match. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at these matches. So this is Laba on the left. So what happened there? Laba didn't have enough side pressure. Uh, Joe has hand control as well. Now Laba's starting to feel the pressure. Now he's pinned. And what you're seeing right there is what I talked about. Okay, so something interesting happens here. Lava accidentally falls into a flop press. And once his wrist cocks back, boom, Joe can't hold on anymore. So Lava has found a move that's working. Does it again. Boom, Joe can't hold on. So they elbow fouled the first win. So that's one win against two. Okay, now Joe, or Jonathan Laba has hit. Uh, he's gonna fall back into that press again. Boom, worked out. Now for some reason in this last match, uh, Laba surrenders the flop press and gets hit right through. Laba has learned something. Uh, by watching those videos, I'm sure he's figured out that Joe is weak to the press and that Laba needs to strengthen his top roll defense. I just wanted to touch on loss today, guys. It's a really important part of arm wrestling. You're gonna hear it. Uh, you gotta lose to get better. People say it in a kind of, uh, in a way that doesn't make sense all the time. It feels non-tangible. It's good for you to lose. No, the, the thing, the reason it's good for you to lose is so that you can literally watch. You need to film all wins and losses. You need to film and upload all of your shit. And you can literally watch what you're doing wrong and it gives you a playbook on how to fix what's wrong with your chain. Thank you for watching today. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to touch on loss and its importance. Um, next week, I'm going to be doing a kind of a talk everything about arm wrestling episode. It's just kind of a newsletter thing. And then we're going to do um, WAL comes up, I think the week after that or, or two weeks after that. I don't remember. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Wes Bjornsson. This is The Grip. And I hope to catch you next time.